Jabez prayed, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my coast and that your hand would be with me, that you'd keep me from evil and it may not grieve me. That's the prayer of Jabez. You know, we don't know very much about Jabez. We know that he prayed. We know what he prayed. We know that he was more honorable. Praying and getting things from God is not a thing to be ashamed of, it's an honorable thing. And God answered his prayer. You know, I say we don't know much about Jabez. It, we know those things. We, that's more than we know about most people in the Bible. Most people in the Bible, about all we know is who they begat and who begat them. Who their father was and the sons that they begat, that they fathered. But you know, it's really important. More important how much money you make is your children. And in a spiritual sense, who did you bring to the Lord? Who have you brought to faith? Paul talked about Timothy being his son in the faith. Now, he prayed, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my coast. Now, I'm drawing a little island here. It doesn't have a very big coast, does it? But it's a nice island. And it reminds me, I prayed this prayer many years ago. My dad pointed it out. Oh, 40 years ago, maybe. And I made this my prayer. Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my coast. And God has blessed me. He has given me eternal life. That's a huge blessing. Then I found out I can have victory over temptation and sin. Oh, that's a great big blessing. I found out I could have my prayers answered. That's a whole bunch of blessings right there. Oh, that you would bless me indeed. If you know how to get prayers, get your prayers answered. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it'll be done for you. John 15, 7. Are you making use of that? Oh, that you would bless me indeed. And so I'm letting this little island represents, represent God's blessing to us when we get his blessing. Blessings of salvation. I found out I could ask God to give me joy and happiness. Psalm 90 verse 14 says, Oh, satisfy us early with your mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. <laughs> It'd be kind of fun to spend a few days on a little island and <sighs> just relax a while, wouldn't it? Well, we can pray and ask God to bless us indeed. And we can ask for his and get his guidance and his power to be a help and blessing to others. But he doesn't stop there. He says, oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my coast. Now watch, just like God has blessed me, I told you with salvation and I found out how I could have victory over temptation and sin. I could have guidance, get my prayers answered. These are wonderful blessings. Now I can show others how they can get their prayers answered. God's made me happy. I can help others be happy. God has blessed me financially. And there are ways in the, there, there are principles in the Bible that will help us to be more prosperous financially. I won't go into much, many of them now, but if we work hard, it helps us. It helps us be more prosperous. If we won't spend above our means, if we will give, given it should be given to you, good measure. That's the Word of God. And as God blesses me, then I can help others, share with others. I can also sh share with them the principles that helped me. And so, watch, God has blessed me 
Oh, that you would bless me indeed, is the prayer. But it doesn't stop there. Bless me indeed and enlarge my coast. Now watch. <laughs> Many years ago, I was glad I was saved and I wanted to be a soul winner and help others get saved. And I was able to win a few here and there. And then my dad had a ministry preaching in schools, public schools in South Carolina, southern part of the United States. And he let me preach, sent me to preach in some of those schools. And it was a great opportunity. Now I was reaching several hundred a week instead of just one occasionally. And then that opportunity closed down. And so we started having some Bible clubs in our home. And uh, we, we'd have, uh, first we had just 15 or 20 in our home and, and then some at another lady's house. And those began to multiply. And now I was reaching about 300 a week, following them up training them, teaching them Bible verses and good Christian songs and quizzing them and, and helping them to bring others to the Lord. You see, God had blessed me indeed. And now he's enlarging my coast. Helping me to be a blessing to others, giving me influence to help others others know the Lord and get blessings as well. That's, a, that's what you can pray. Oh, that you'd bless me indeed and enlarge my coast. And so instead of just me enjoying God's blessings, now I found out how I can bring his blessings to others. He said, you'll receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you'll be witnesses to me. It's a wonderful thing to have God's power to bring others, to help others come to faith in Jesus and have eternal life. Why don't you pray that? Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my coast. And I told you, Dad pointed that verse out and I, I prayed it many years ago and then I prayed it some more. And then God led me to a wider ministry, enlarge my coast. So now I was preaching in other states and eventually most of the states in the United States, God was enlarging my coast some more. Instead of reaching just a few hundred or several hundred, now thousands all over the country. You can pray all that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my coast. And then God led and enlarged our coast even more. In the summer of 2000, God clearly guided me and led me that we needed to move to South Africa. We've been there a couple times, a few times, and so now God was leading us to South Africa. And we began having ministry in prisons and churches and after a while some schools. And then after just a few years I was preaching in hundreds of schools. It's a huge opportunity and then God would lead us in other countries as well, but mostly in Southern Africa, preaching on television publishing books that will help after, when we're, we, we cannot be there with the people after we preach and we leave books and DVDs. And God was greatly enlarging our ministry. You can pray that. Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my coast. Then he prayed something else too that your hand would be with me. You see, the Bible says, 
When the hand of God was on them, a great many people turned to the Lord. I believe that's in Acts 11. Not just blessing you, when his hand is with you, you can reach many, a great number of people. That's what we're praying. Oh, that you bless me, enlarge my coast, my influence, my area of ministry. But if his hand is with me, then we can do it in power and his blessing. And then he prays one more thing. He said, and that you would keep me from evil. I've known people well who I enjoyed working with them, but then there's sometimes secret sins I didn't even know about. And it ruined their, their lives, their families, their ministry. And so we pray, not only that God will bless us, bless us indeed, and enlarge us, enlarge our coast, enlarge our ministry, our influence, and that his hand would be with us, we pray that he'd keep us from evil, so it won't grieve us. I've seen how a godly man of God, who was greatly used of the Lord, fell into temptation, sexual sin. He kept it pretty much undercover. I've known several. Some of them are some of my closest friends. And it's ruined their ministry. And years later, people are suffering and people have turned away from the Lord. They were so shocked and disgusted by what they learned. We need to pray this. That you would keep me from evil that it may not grieve me. This is really like the Lord's Prayer. Part of the Lord's Prayer is, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We need to pray that every day. How do I know that? Well, the Lord commanded. He said, after this manner, therefore, pray ye. And he gave us the prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven. He's even more pointed in Luke chapter 11. He said, when you pray, say, our Father which art in heaven. And part of the prayer, remember, is lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now, we're commanded to pray that prayer. We call that the Lord's Prayer, our Father. That's, that's a command. Are you obeying that command? If you're not, that's one reason why you've had so much problem with sin and temp falling into sin and temptation. It's a daily prayer. How do I know it's a daily prayer? I know it's not only commanded, but I know it's a daily prayer because part of the prayer is, give us this day our daily bread. Why is it that the, the apostles fell into temptation and sin around the time when Jesus was arrested? Jesus told them why. He said, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. Stay awake and pray. And many times we've been too lazy, too sleepy to pray, too busy with other things. Maybe good things, maybe stupid things that we didn't even pray. Every morning we need to pray. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lots of kinds of temptations, sexual temptations, anger and meanness and unforgiveness and <clears throat> um, disobedience, laziness, just so many kinds of temptations. We have to be circumspect. That means circum, that refers to looking all around. Spec, that refers to looking. These are spectacles. Yeah, somebody's a spectacle. It means a, it's a, quite a sight to see. Uh, yeah, circumspect means to look. Be careful all around. Temptations come from all sides, not just one side. And so we pray, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now, God granted this man, Jabez, what he asked for. Now, I've heard people, sometimes even men of God, make fun of Jabez, the prayer of Jabez. That's a foolish thing to do. God says he's honorable, and he can teach us some lessons. Whatsoever things are written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now watch. <clears throat> 
So let's pray this prayer. Oh, that you would bless me indeed. Have you been blessed with salvation? If you have been blessed with salvation, have you been blessed with happiness? Pray and ask God. Oh, satisfy us early with your mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Have you been blessed with peace? You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. We know that all things work together for good. That's a blessing to know that all things work together for peace, uh, for, for good, and so we can have peace and re relax even when bad things are happening because we know that all things are working together for good. And I get the desires of my heart when I delight myself in the Lord. Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. We can get, I can get my prayers answered. You can get your prayers answered. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done to you. We can get guidance. We can ask God to guide us. God wants to bless you. Oh, that you would bless me indeed. And then ask him to enlarge your coast. And after he's enlarged it, you can ask him to enlarge it some more. Open your mouth wide, the Lord says, and I will fill it. Elisha, I like him. He not only asked for a blessing, but he asked for a double portion of the Spirit on Elijah. Man, Elijah did wonderful miracles, a bunch of them. Yeah, Elisha prayed and he did a, a more than twice as many. Open your mouth wide and I'll fill it. Listen, if we'll believe Jesus, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. So we can ask God to enlarge our coast and that his hand will be with us. His power will be working with us. Not our power, it's God's power in us. But we can ask for that. And if we do, we will be honorable. That's what God said about Jabez. And then we can ask him to keep us from evil. So many kinds of temptation and sin that are gonna bring pain to us. Whew. David had a few minutes Maybe a few hours of pleasure with Bathsheba that night. Another, another man's wife. Oh, he had pleasure, I'm sure. You, you read his story. Boy, he had pain and pain and more pain in his family and his nation, others. The sword never did, would never depart from his house. The man of God said, ask God to keep you from pain and, day, and, and sin and evil. That's a good prayer. In fact, it's a commanded prayer. Let's ask God to bless us, indeed, enlarge our coasts. His hand will be with us, and that He keep us from evil, that it may not grieve us. Pray that prayer today and as often as you need to from here on out. And God will bless you and make you a blessing to many others. Here's a similar prayer I pray from time to time for myself and our family. God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that thy way may be known upon the earth thy saving health among all nations. God blesses us so much we can overflow with blessings to people in many nations. And he's been doing that. And you can pray and ask God to bless you indeed. Bless you so that people in the nations will find out and get his blessing as well. God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his name to shine upon us that thy way may be known upon earth thy saving health among all nations. Pray that. Get his blessing and be a blessing to many, many others.
Jesus said, you're the salt of the earth. Here's some salt. What's it good for? Well, the main thing it's good for is tasting salty. And it does taste salty. If it, was not, if it lost its flavor, throw it away. Jesus also said, you're the light of the world. Now watch. You see this little light here? 
It's a light fi fixture and a light bulb, but there's no light coming out of it. Well, you see, I've cut the wires and uh, in this little cup here, the wires sticking down in the cup on e the one here and one here. Now I'm gonna bridge the gap with some water. Now this is gonna be a little science lesson too. Is water a good conductor, a conductor of electricity? No, it's not. Watch. I bridge the gap between the, with water between those two wires. But there's no light coming out. Now, if I put some salt in here, it's gonna change things. When it's not salty, it reminds me of people who are not obeying Jesus' commandments. They'll get angry with people. They call themselves Christians, but they get angry and call them bad names. Hey, Jesus said, whoever does that is in danger of hell fire. They're looking with lust at porn on their phones and their computers, uh, going to places they go on the beach and other places. They're not salty. You're the salt of the earth. If you're salty, that means you're different. You're obeying Jesus' commandments. Now let's put a little more salt in here. I see a little bit of light, you see it? Whoop. Yeah, a little bit. He started to obey Jesus' commandments. And now people can see there's a change. They see there's some, a little bit of power in his life. He's not just talking, it's not all talk. He sees that he's loving his enemies, not just his friends. He's forgiving those who wrong him. He remembers when he's wronged others, he goes back and makes it right. And as he continues more and more obeying Jesus' commands, his life is more salty, it's different. Oh, you see, there's more power in his life, more power in his witness, more influence when he witnesses to Jesus. Man, it's getting pretty bright now, isn't it? Jesus said, you're the light of the world. And as we obey his commandments, we're gonna show people the right way. We will be a light to the world. And the better we obey, and the better we um, are salty, more different from the world by obeying what Jesus said, the brighter our light's gonna shine. Let's have the overhead lights off some. Hey, we better obey God's word for our own sake and for the sake of those around us to show them the light the right way.